Uh, really a couple of reasons. Uh, it's a warm season crop, so providing um, s exceptional growth under uh, uh, temperatures above 25 degrees Celsius and uh, um, a fairly uh, uh, cost-effective option for growers to plant as well too. So from a seed, uh, seed perspective, we're looking in the sort of the $20 to $30 per acre range, depending on the hybrid and the planting rate and the planting mechanism as well too. So I, I think uh, in this particular case, um, and, and historically we've used the sorghum Sudan grass as a dry land grazing option. In this case, we're looking at, at, a, at this as a, an associated crop for both barley and uh, corn for silage. And uh, so this is basically a silage crop that we want to grow. So it's a very, uh, you know, in this case, we're working with uh, one of our plant genetic suppliers. Um, in this case, we have 11 different uh, hybrids that we're evaluating. It's been wonderful because we have uh, currently three or four options that really look to perform very well for our environment this year. Uh, but there is a vast multitude of, of varieties and uh, it's important to see how they perform in your area. So planting options, I think, uh, exist a number of different options. Uh, um, it's a, it's a, a medium size for, for the small seed perspective. Um, but uh, generally in this, uh, well in this particular case, uh, the grower used a corn planter and used specific plates for sorghum. But uh, an air drill would work fine and to a lesser degree broadcasting and hero packing would be an option. Yeah, so we're looking at a minimum soil temperature sustainable of 15 degrees Celsius to plant sorghum sudan grass. Um, and one of the one of the benefits I think are at, uh, that we should take a look at um, agronomically is a pre-plant uh, 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 glyphosate application, and uh, so as I said, soil temperature 15 degrees Celsius. In many cases, uh, this is associated in the feedlot or higher manure fields, uh, fairly high end use. I would say somewhere between an average of barley and uh, and corn silage, so uh, in excess of 100 pounds of N per acre, and. Uh, um, you know, targeting uh, irrigation water as well too. We need uh, moisture to grow this crop. So I think this is great. It's a learning site for us and we've got a great cooperator who's uh, learning on several hundred acres of his own crop production. But uh, so I think from a harvesting perspective, we need to take a look at, uh, at uh, getting um, uh, the crop dry enough. Um, it's, it's not uh, tolerant of frost, so so uh, we'll need probably in this case a frost to get to below 70% moisture to begin harvest. One of the challenges is that um, under cool conditions and after frost we can, uh, because of the fast growth of sorghum sudan grass, we can accumulate nitrate. So testing is a, is a minimum and managing your, your feeding if you have higher nitrate levels is, is critical. You know, uh, you know certainly uh, um, weed control, um, it's not a, uh, um, genetically modified crops, so it doesn't have the glyphosate tolerance that some of the other uh, crops, corn in particular, has. So weed control is a, is a bit of a challenge. Uh, this grower used a combination both of dival and a half rate of atrazine to, to control his weed population. Well, I think, uh, you know, a good crop of uh, barley silage would be in the 11 or 12 tons per acre range, metric tons per acre. And I think for this to be a sustainable option, we're going to need a, a 15 to 20 percent yield boost over that crop. Well, traditionally, since the 11th of September today, and traditionally 15th of September is our first killing frost, um, we're, we're literally a week or 10 days, I think, away from harvest. We'll need to get the uh, plant material dried down a bit first, but we're looking forward to the full um, tonnage and, and uh, nutritional analysis on this crop.